This is a public meeting. Any persons wishing, wishing to address the city council, assessor agency to the RDA and housing agency is asked to complete a blue speaker slip and submit it to the city clerk prior to the start of the meeting. When the item is announced and your name is called by the mayor, please come forward to the microphone and address yourself to the city council. Unless the mayor extends the time, there is a three minute time limit for each public presentation. If you wish to address the city council on any subject matter within the city council's jurisdiction that is not listed on the agenda, you may do so during the public comment portion of the agenda. Any information provided on this speaker slip will be public record. Diane, will you call the roll? Council Member Jackson? Here. Council Member Silva? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Vegas Walker? Here. Council Member Sanders? Here. And Mayor Solomon? Here. Mr. Silva, could you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? And Mrs. Sanders will lead, lead us in the invocation. Please join me saluting our flag and our country. Ready to begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Those who wish to join us in prayer, we ask that you remain standing, please. Our Heavenly Father, we've come at this time and this place seeking your divine guidance. Lord, we ask you to enter into our deliberations. Lead us to the path that would be the most acceptable for the residents of this community. Lord, we also pray for those who are less fortunate than we are. We ask that you would comfort those who are ill and in rest homes. We ask that you would provide shelter for those who are homeless, food for those who are hungry. And for those on the battlefield, we ask that you will encircle them with your angels. These are all blessings we ask in thy son's name. Amen. Scheduled public comments. Items appearing under this section have submitted a written request to the city clerk a minimum of one week prior to the regular meeting. There was a pastor that was supposed to be here speaking tonight. He canceled and he will be at the first meeting in September. Consent agenda items are approved. Mr. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I have my clothes. City attorney's report. I apologize. It's I apologize. It's going to be long because I have two meetings to report out. So, um, on a motion by Councilmember Vegas Walker, second by Councilmember Silva, the council met on July second, two thousand thirteen, in closed session at five thirty six p.m. All council members were present. There was an item added to closed session as the need to take action arose after the agenda had been posted. Moved by Councilmember Sanders, seconded by Councilmember Vegas Walker to add labor negotiations with El Centro Firefighters Association to the closed session agenda and the motion unanimously carried. Council met with its labor relations negotiators, Ruben Duran, city manager, and Terry Brownlee, human resources director, concerning labor matters, including the added item. There is no action to report, but direction was given to staff on all three units. Um, closed session adjourned at 6.01 p.m. On a motion by Councilmember Sanders, second by Councilmember Vegas Walker, the City Council reconvened into closed session at 6.51 p.m. and adjourned at 7.07 p.m. Um, and that concludes my report for the July 2nd meeting. Um, the July 16th successor agency of the uh, El Centro Redevelopment Agency report on a motion by agency member Vegas Walker, second by agency member Silva. The successor agency to the El Centro Redevelopment Agency met in closed session at 11.33 a.m. All agency members were present. The successor agency met with its real property negotiator, Marcela Piedra, acting city manager and economic development director, and heard a report regarding lien subordination requests for the properties located at 1950 Smoke Tree Drive and 289 Driftwood Drive. There is no final action to report with respect to either property, but direction was given to staff on both. The closed session for the successor agency concluded at 11.44 a.m. And with respect to the City Council, on a motion by Councilmember Vegas Walker, second by Councilmember Jackson, the City Council met in closed session at 11.44 a.m. All council members were present. 
Reports were given to Council on the two anticipated litigation items. One report was for information only. There is no action to report on the other items, the other item, but direction was given to staff and community development director uh, Norma Viacanya participated in the report. Council met with its labor relations negotiator Terry Brownlee, human resources director, concerning labor matters. There are agreements with the economic development director and the El Centro Firefighters Association coming out of closed session for approval. With respect to all other bargaining units identified on the closed session agenda, there is no action to report, but direction was given to staff. And closed session concluded at 12.15 p.m. And that concludes my report. Okay. With regard to the negotiations regarding acquisition dis disposition of real property, uh, staff was also given direction in addition to specific um, terms and conditions, but also to come back with a workflow process improvement so that those items in the future potentially would not have to come to council. We are going to move forward with that. Right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Walker. Consent agenda items are approved by one motion. Council members or members of the public may pull consent items to be considered separately at a time determined by the mayor. Any council members need to pull anything? I move approval of items two through 11. Second. Sorry. Thank you. And the motion carries five zero. We have a public hearing for the purpose of soliciting input on the annual performance report for CD CDBG program income and approval of the submittal of the city's annual performance report for CDBG program income. Marcelo Pietra. Yes, good evening, Honorable uh, Mayor, members of the Council. Um, before you is an actual um, requirement that we have every year that we need to provide um, and conduct this public hearing to report out on the activities and the um, income that we receive through our program income uh, under the uh, Community Development Block Grant Program. This is actually a requirement of the uh, State Department of Housing and Community Development. As you know, we are a entitlement community under HUD, but we do have to continue reporting our program income activity to HCD um, because the, the program income that's generated actually comes from grants that we previous that our city previously received from HCD, and that's why we have to conduct um, this annual public hearing. And the period of time that we are reporting on is actually on July 1st, 2012, through um, the period ending uh, June 30th of 2013. The um, program income fund activity that we, um, we had for the period of time that we are reporting on, the revenue that we received um, under our first time home buyer program, we had um, payments that were received um, in the amount of $1,000 and, and $20. Under our housing rehab program, um, this was um, either uh, loans that were paid off or payments that we are receiving. We actually received $112,472. And then we do earn interest in this uh, fund. And we had uh, $5,422 in interest that was earned under this fund. So a total of $118,914 was um, available um, or revenue was received during this period of time. Our actual expenditures, um, this is for eligible programs and projects that we can fund through this program income fund. We actually have um, money set aside, even though we didn't experience any expenditures during this period of time. As you know, we just awarded this project, and so we didn't um, experience any expenditures under this fund. The Sports Pavilion project um, at the uh, Martin Luther King 
park. Um, fair housing, we also set aside uh, some funding for fair housing services. And we also set aside um, during this fiscal year, 40,300 to relocate our public library to its uh, current site. And we also set aside funding to cover uh, program administration costs, which we haven't um, shown as an expenditure yet because we're still finalizing um, the amount for under program administration. Yeah. And this is just a quick summary of the total program income that uh, has been committed but actually has not been expended. Um, is under the sports pavilion, we um, set aside back in 2008 $600,000. Um, to date, we have expended 275907 So we have an unexpended balance of $324,093. Again, in 2011, we um, expended, a, uh, we set aside additional funding under this fund, $64,729. Um, we still, and there's a typo in the unexpended balance, but it is $64,729 that um, is still available. Again, we haven't started construction with the project so we still have these funds available. Under public services for housing, we have fully expended the 9,300. Under the public library relocation, we have fully expended those funds, so that has been fully expended. And again, program administration, we're still finalizing our um, activity there, so we haven't um, shown our expense here. Um, we also include our um, set-asides, uh, which total 92,000 for our upcoming CDBG annual action plan. Um, so that's already allocated. Um, so unexpended uh, fund balance basically is 493,222. And uh, again, this is just a quick summary of um, the actual balance that we, that we, um, that we have um, as of June 30th, but indicating what has been committed. Um, as I explained in the previous slides, um, 401,221, and then um, we are showing as a balance of, as of July 1st, 2013, 492,000, and then of course what we have, the act various activities that we have committed for this upcoming annual action plan year, which total the 92,000. So in reality what we have is we have about $400,241 that are, we don't have an actual project um, uh, committed or any funding set aside for any particular project and what we intend to do which is what we're required to do um, is that when we start our annual action plan process is we take into consideration projects and we um, set aside uh, these funds when we go through that process of allocating funds so that's when you'll see that allocation of those funds when we do the annual action plan. Um, so this concludes um, my presentation. Um, again, this is a report and, and your council item actually has the report that needs to be submitted to the state. It's actually a very, you know, just one page report. It's in a summary indicating the total program income received and how much has been expended um, and we submit that to the state. I, try to give you a more detailed presentation to kind of give you a history on projects that we're still working on and being funded through this funding source. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Mr. Mayor, um, Marcela, on the, the set aside that was um, uh, used in 08, 09, the $600,000 that we spent, two seventy five, dollars um, that was set aside in 08, 09. Is there any jeopardy of those funds um, being uh, having to be the obligated for this project at, at the longer this continues or are they are they good for actually these have been conversations just as long as um, the same conversations we've had with HUD um, because of the delays we have experienced with the implementation of this project that's why it was critical for us to award the construction of this project we are in communication with um, the state indicating that we're moving forward with the project and um, they have allowed us um, to have the money set aside as long as we're uh, providing you, progress bro. updates, okay. which we are. But isn't some of the uncertainty coming about because of the, the redevelopment agency, demise of the redevelopment agency? So it's like the state has created this very complex situation where we don't know They've, they've injected so much uncertainty into the process. That's correct. So our, our, either CDBG mm -hmm. or, or HUD, are they, I mean, are they being cognizant and, and showing some level of sympathy and or empathy or understanding or something, recognizing that 
this isn't our creation. Uh -huh. Actually, they they have, and I have okay. to say that you know they have, and as long as we make them aware of the of the issue, they understand. Um, for us as a city, what was what's important is that we are demonstrating that we're moving forward with the project. It's been awarded, and we hope to start construction here in August. As a matter of fact, we have a, you know a, a groundbreaking ceremony planned um, here this month. So we're, the project's moving forward, um, and that's the communication we have. And we have indicated that you know the reason, I guess the, the main reason why we were not moving forward was because of the redevelopment um, right. agency funds okay. being at jeopardy. So very good. Yes. Uh -huh. Thank you. Anyone else? Could you open it? Is there anyone from the public who would like to address this issue? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the council. I'm prepared to move staff's recommendation and forward this uh, to the state. I'll second. We have a motion by Ms. Sanders, second by Mrs. Walker. Please vote. Motion carries 5 0. Should, um, Ms. Caldwell, should the agenda item actually state that what we're doing is approving the submittal of the annual performance report? So it's for Soliciting input, okay, and approval of the submittal. That's what we just, okay, perfect, thank you. I'm going to new business, discussion, and any necessary action regarding appointments to the Personnel Appeal Board. We have three openings on there. One lady would like to be reappointed, that's Sylvia Limas, and I've added to it Sierra Jaime. And we still have one opening. I thought I had taken care of those, but found out the person lives in Imperial. I bet I see him in El Centro all the time. Now I'm only joking. <laughs> but anyway, I have those two names, Sylvia Limos and Sierra Jaime. I'll move uh, the mayor's recommendation of the two candidates. Second. Motion carries 5-0. Mr. Mayor Solomon, just clarification, those will be the four-year terms on both of those names? Yeah. Or three-year terms. Four years. Public comment. Mayor, City Council. Are we adding the resolution for the firefighters agreement? Do we need to move to add that? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Well, to clarify, it, it'll be a motion to add um, both resolutions, correct? Correct. Okay, the position of Director of Economic Development and also the resolution pertaining to the El Central Firefighters Association. I think Keith and El Cardone was consent. Uh, yeah, we're just adding the firefighters. Ah. Well, I guess it was they're sitting close session. We need to add, yeah, we need to add as well to correct the typo. Yes. Okay. Even though it was listed on the closed session agenda? Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, I'll amend my motion for both uh, resolutions. Wasn't there a second? Yes, second from Chris. Okay. okay. Motion by Mr. Jackson, second by Mrs. Silva. Please vote. Your motion carries. Do we want to take this one at a time? Yeah. Uh, okay. I'll move for resolution 13 dash for the else firefighters. 74. 74. Central firefighters. Um, where's the language? Where's our language? Ah, there we go. Resolu resolution of the City Council of the City of El Centro establishing terms and conditions of employment, including compensation for fiscal year 2013 and 14. Second. A motion by Mr. Jackson, second by Mr. Silva. Please vote. Motion carries. Is resolution number? That was resolution seventy-four. 74. I'll move for resolution thirteen seventy-five. Resolution of the City Council of the City of El Centro establishing compensation and employment terms 
for the position of Director of Economic Development. Second. There was a motion by Mr. Jackson, second by Ms. Walker. Please vote. That motion carries 5-0. Public comment. City Council welcomes your input. At this time, members of the public may address the City Council on any matter not listed on the posted agenda. Pursuant to the Brown Act, no action will be taken on any items brought forth under public comment. Please com complete a speaker slip and submit it to the City Clerk prior to the start of the meeting. Unless the Mayor extends the time, there is a three minute time limit for public presentations. Seeing that we have seeing that we have none, we'll move right along. Mayor and Council members report. Want to do task force reports, Mr. Mayor? Task force reports? Yes. Um, just uh, quickly, um, as many of you might have saw in the paper, uh, they have, uh, our governor is formally appointed, uh, she's been serving as the interim uh, warden out at Sentinella, and it was made official yesterday, Amy Miller, um, she resides in Brawley, age 39 is the new warden for Sentinella Prison, and um, I believe she's the youngest warden in the state right now, I think it said, and uh, one of seven or eight female wardens in the state, so uh, that became official yesterday. Um, I'll be traveling to uh, Los Angeles tomorrow for to represent us at the JPIA um, annual meeting, and I'll have a report when I return. And I'll, Cheryl, sure, you're going to do the hospital? Yeah. Ms. Silva? Uh, no report, Mr. Mayor. Ms. Walker? Uh, with regard to the El Centro Regional Medical Center and the El Centro City Council Task Force with regard to affiliation, uh, we did have an opportunity to review what they're referring to as the book, which is essentially the proposal that puts together all of the information with regard to the hospital in terms of its uh, financial conditions, its programs, the different um, specialties that are offered, the physical space, the infrastructure, all of that put together. We were all given an opportunity to comment and uh, that will now be shipped out by our consultant or by the hospital's consultant to a number of different hospitals that have expressed um, interest in an affiliation or acquisition or something at this point. We're just calling it a collaborative effort. Uh, so it's, it's moving along really very, very well. The consultants are um, continuing to tell us that there is a great deal of interest, especially with the uh, financial strength of the hospital that it's had a couple of very good years um, at a time when several hospitals are not doing nearly as well. So the fact that it's uh, doing as well has the uh, community support that it has. I think that we're, we're very well positioned. The uh, Community Enhancement Task Force will meet tomorrow at 1130 to review a number of items. I believe the council has been provided with the agenda for that meeting and we'll make sure, Ms. Sanders and I will make sure that the minutes are provided to all of you. The only other item I wanted to report on, Mr. Mayor, is that last week we had a number of representatives from the Southern California Association of Governments come down Tuesday and then on Wednesday they met with all of the city managers with the exception of Westmoreland. Westmoreland was not present at the meeting, but um, the county CEO and I believe three of the members at least two of the members of the Board of Supervisors were there and they gave, a, I thought, a very uh, good presentation on a number of items um, that SCAG is working with, uh, the entire region in particular, the RTP, Regional Transportation Plan. So that concludes. Ms. Sanders? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I have uh, quite a bit of information I'd like to share, starting with uh, what occurred on July 11 and 12 with the State League Board of Directors. Um, one of the things that came forth was Immigration Reform Task Force um, provided information and the board accepted that. The Immigration Task Force very much mirrors what's going on at the national level. 
I do have a booklet here. I can recite those uh, various items if you would like. Otherwise, I can leave the booklet and let you look at it at your convenience. The big, big issue, however, I'm sure you all read in the paper, was the governor actually signing the legislation to eliminate programs that, um, that offer hiring tax credits. I, we, we can't quite figure out uh, the methodology or uh, the reasoning behind the governor's uh, doing this. But nonetheless, it's been done. So it's still pending as to what the overall outcome or fallout will be for this valley. We know what it was like to lose RDA. So if you lose enterprise zones and everything else, it's, I think it'll be devastating. Um, Mr. Grant, Mark Grant from the city of Imperial will be on our city's um, resolutions committee for this division. And of course, we know that Mr. Jackson is scheduled to be our delegate at the meeting that's going to be held in Sacramento. Oh, Cheryl's delegate, and you're the alternate. All right, let me rephrase that. Ms. Walker will be our delegate, and Mr. Jackson will be the alternate in Sacramento on September 18th through the 20th. There's another issue that we're quite uh, puzzled by as to why the legislators have moved in this direction, and that's SB7. The prevailing wage that would be required, whether you're a charter city or not, for projects under a million dollars. Um, therefore, uh, that would be retroactive if the governor chooses to sign it. So we're going to try to work with Governor Brown, and hopefully he will really look at that closely before he make a decision as to whether he's going to move forward with that. Of the number of um, cities, there's 482 cities in California, 121 are charter cities. So that means there's only about a fourth of us that are charter cities, and whether that will weigh on the governor's decision remains to be seen. But that, that, I mean, that gets right to the issue of local control city. Well, you know? well yes, you're absolutely correct, but um, the, um, the league was there with both feet stomping and pleading for this not to occur with those committees. Nonetheless, they moved forward. Uh, they said they had a difficult time. They, they in the past, have been friendly to us, uh, but they were not friendly on this particular issue. It does speak to local control, but yeah. right now it's headed for the governor's desk, so it's up to the governor as to whether he'll sign it. And there's some, I'm going to use the term skepticism, and because the number of charter cities is, is only about a fourth of those cities in the state of California. As I recall, when we had the, the discussion on charter cities in the council, that was really the most significant advantage of being a charter city. All the other advantages had been diluted over time, so this is really the one that, that I know persuaded me to go in this direction, and now well, it, it potentially it could be eliminated. It, well, it could be eroded, it could yes. be greatly eroded. And, and uh, if that uh, passes and the governor signs it, uh, then we're back to square one. Um, so now let's move to the National League of Cities. I know that we've had Mr. Pether come up and talk to us about CDBG. The National League is looking at ways to fine tune its strategic plan and figure out how it can become a force for the nation's cities and towns, especially in Washington. And right now, Washington is just about as the process, the legislative process, let me use that, is as broke as the state of California's process. Nothing seems to get done. It seems to me that there's a paralysis. So the National League is having a very difficult time in penetrating any of those legislators in the past or congressional members that have been friendly toward us. We don't seem to have very many friends anymore, either in Washington and or in Sacramento. So one of the concerns is the allocation for CDBG. So as one might suspect, we're back again to where we thought we've already fought these battles, we thought we had made significant inroads to um, safeguarding this funding stream, and here we are on the cusp of having to fight them again. Yeah. So that's what's going to be happening. Um, a former uh, president, um, Mike Kasperzak, chaired this, and I mean, is on the board, and he brought forth a very good report as to what we might anticipate, however, uh, there's absolutely no solutions in how we go about solving these problems. Uh, the NLC's uh, annual conference will be held in wa Seattle, Washington. So I did send information over to the city clerk's office. Those who think they may wish to go to Seattle, I would suggest you 
start planning for that process right now. So with that in mind, um, that's where we are. So battles that we fought still need to be, we still need to get back in the ring and fight again. And unfortunately, um, we're, we're all baffled as we sit around the, the board level. We're all baffled as to the lack of understanding about the plight of local government. It just seems that either they are turning a deaf ear toward our concerns, they don't care, they're insensitive. I mean, so all of those adjectives seem to apply at any given time. And the same token it applies over in uh, Washington as well. Mr. Mayor, that concludes my report. Okay. N uh, no. I thought that was really the task force reports. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Put it all together. Okay. We're, we're attempting to help you oh, have a no, record sorry, winning. You didn't help you. <laughs> no. Sorry. I knew we. I knew we should have adjourned 20 minutes ago. <laughs> I went to the chambers meeting. Yeah, went to the chambers meeting, and the new president has a host of things that he would like to see done. It's going to be interesting to see how they do it. I had my lunch, my last lunch with the mayor, and I had a chance to try out. I think there was like about 10 or 12 organizations that went went to lunch with me. And we all went to burgers and beers. So I just kept moving around, ordering anything. I hadn't ordered there before. And it was really an excellent place to go. Great atmosphere. And I uh, had a nice time. Okay. We're ready to adjourn. We're done till September. See you yes. in September. We have a lovely song that says, Meeting adjourned. I'm sorry, I was talking too long.